Welcome back. Today's session is on midbrain. So I would like all of you to go through uh, my previous session on the details of pond so that it will be easy for you to understand midbrain better. So whenever we discuss about a brainstem, uh, we discuss it under two main headings, the external features and internal features. So before moving on to the external features and internal features, what is midbrain? So this region of the brainstem is known as midbrain and it connects the forebrain with hindbrain. Now uh, it's just roughly 2.5 cm in width and 2.5 cm in length. Now we will see the features. First we will see the external features. When we discuss about the external features of the brainstem, we discuss it under two main headings. They are the ventral features and the other one the dorsal features. So what are the ventral features which you can make out in the midbrain? We can see the two cerebral peduncles, two cerebral peduncles on either side. So that is what you get in on the ventral surface of midbrain and they are finely corrugated. That means you have the longitudinally running fibers passing through the crust cerebri or crura cerebri of the brainstem. So what are the longitudinal running fibers? They are the fibers coming from the cortex and they run downwards in order to end either in the pons or in the motor nuclei of the cranial nerves or in the uh, spinal cord. We call it as corticospinal which are going to the spinal cord, the corticonuclear fibers which are going on to the motor nuclei of the cranial nerve and the corticopontine fibers which are going on to the pons. So that's about the cerebral peduncles or crust cerebri of the midbrain and any other structure which you can make out on the ventral aspect you can see there are mainly four structures crossing the crust cerebri from above downwards first one this is the optic tract you have the optic tract crossing the crust cerebri then you have the basilar artery running through the basilar groove of the pons and it divides into posterior cerebral artery and I would like to mention one more artery here that is the superior cerebellar artery which are running along the superior border of pons and you have a very fine bundle of fibers running along the superior aspect of pons they are known as tenia pontus tenia pontus so the structures which are crossing the crust cerebri or cerebral peduncle are in order from above downwards you have the optic tract then you have the posterior cerebral artery then you have the superior cerebellar artery and you have the tenia pontus a bundle of white matter so these are the main four structures which are crossing the ventral aspect of cerebral peduncles now you can see two nerves uh, which one is emerging from the medial aspect and the one is emerging from the lateral aspect which are the cranial nerves so before going on to the cranial nerves uh, in the previous sessions I have mentioned uh, when we talk about the cranial nerves emerging from the brainstem we can remember it as follows we have the third and fourth cranial nerve nerves emerging from the midbrain then five six seven and eight from the pons and uh, the rest of the cranial nerves emerging from the medulla so here you have the third and fourth cranial nerves so these two cranial nerves can be named as the third cranial nerve and the fourth cranial nerve so which is the fourth this one is the fourth because this is the only cranial nerve which is emerging from the dorsal aspect of brainstem all the rest of the cranial nerves will be emerging from this surface this is known as the ventral surface so all the cranial nerves will be emerging from the ventral surface of brainstem whereas this one is actually what we are seeing is a part which has uh, come, uh, which have uh, actually emerged from the dorsal aspect and crossed over the lateral aspect of the midbrain and now it is emerged through the ventral aspect. So laterally you have the fourth cranial nerve and medially you have the oculomotor or the third cranial nerve. And uh, one more thing I would like to mention here is you can see the relation of the posterior cerebral and superior cerebellar arteries with respect to the cranial nerves. What is the relation? You have both the cranial nerves seated between the posterior cerebral and superior cerebellar arteries. So this is about the ventral aspect of midbrain. You have the cerebral peduncles or the crust cerebri. Then uh, you have the structures crossing 
the cross cerebri from above downwards you have the optic tract you have the posterior cerebral artery then you have the third and fourth cranial nerves one emerging from the medial aspect of the cerebral peduncle and one emerging from the lateral aspect of cerebral peduncle then you have the superior cerebellar artery and finally you have the tinea pontus a white matter running across the pons now uh, when we discussed about pons and medulla we discussed everything which you have seen on the ventral aspect but i'm not mentioning anything about this region why this is actually uh, not a part of midbrain this region which lies between the two cerebral peduncles you call it as interpedangular fossa so interpedangular fossa is a region which is lying between the two cerebral peduncles now we will move on to the dorsal aspect of midbrain when we talk about the dorsal aspect of midbrain you can see four rounded structures four rounded structures two paired above and two paired below the two paired above you call it as superior colliculus superior colliculus and the two paired below you call it as inferior colliculus so superior colliculus and inferior colliculus all together they form a four rounded stru structure complex you call it as corpora quadrigemina corpora quadrigemina so the four rounded structures you call it as corpora quadrigemina and they are separated by a cruciform sulcus you can make out a cruciform sulcus separating the four rounded bodies and when you trace this cruciform sulcus the vertical limb of the sulcus above it ends in a depression and this is where you get the pineal body and when you trace this cruciform the vertical limb of the cruciform sulcus below it ends in the frenulum valley frenulum valley of the superior medullary velum so this is uh, the, the this is the corpora quadrigemina the important structure which you will be visualizing when you look at the dorsal surface of the midbrain and from these colliculi you can see two limbs running one from the superior colliculus laterally and the other one from the inferior colliculus laterally one from the superior colliculus you can call it as superior brachium brachium means limb so superior brachium from the superior colliculus which is running laterally and you have the inferior colliculus and the bundle of white matter which is running laterally you call it as inferior brachium so where are they going superior brachium and inferior brachium superior brachium actually ends in a body known as lateral geniculate body and inferior brachium which is connecting the inferior colliculus ends in a body known as medial geniculate body so uh, students always get confused uh, regarding the lateral geniculate body and medial geniculate body and all, uh, always they find it difficult to remember which is concerned with what so i would like to uh, suggest one thing superior and inferior you have the two main uh, sense organs superiorly you have the visual and inferiorly you have the auditory so visual is concerned with light so l stands for light so superior colliculus is concerned with the or connected to the lateral geniculate body and inferior colliculus inferiorly you have the ear which is concerned with the auditory pathway so it is concerned with music so inferior colliculus is connected to medial m stands for music so medial geniculate body through the inferior brachium and on either side the lateral most you have the crora cerebri cross cerebri on either side so this is how it will look like when you look at the dorsal aspect of midbrain now uh, i would like to mention one more thing which is a cavity which you get in the midbrain whichever part of the brain you take you will get a cavity inside it when you take the cerebral cortex you have the lateral ventricle when you take the space between the two thalami you will get the third ventricle when you take the space between the pons and medulla on one side and the cerebellum on the opposite side the space lying between these two important structures you get the fourth ventricle so what is there in the midbrain so you have a connecting duct 
which connects the third ventricle to the fourth ventricle. So that duct actually passes through the midbrain and this is what you are going to see in the cross sections. That uh, cavity of midbrain is known as aqueduct of sylvius or cerebral aqueduct. So in the sections we will be showing the cavity of the midbrain as the cerebral aqueduct or aqueduct of sylvius. So it's time uh, for uh, or to move on to the internal aspects of the midbrain. So uh, how many sections we will get in the midbrain when you take the internal aspect? We, we will get two sections one at the level of inferior colliculus and the other one at the level of superior colliculus. These are the two sections under which we will be discussing the internal aspect of midbrain because uh, the rest of the region it is almost the same. So the difference is at the level of superior colliculus and at the level of inferior colliculus. So first we will be seeing the section at the level of inferior colliculus. So before moving on to the section at the inferior colliculus, uh, let me discuss about the midbrain section in general. So if you draw an imaginary line at the level of cerebral aqueduct, I have already mentioned that this is known as the cerebral aqueduct. So if you draw an imaginary line at the level of cerebral aqueduct, you can divide the midbrain into a dorsal part, a very small dorsal part, you call it as tectum. And the larger ventral part you call it as cerebral peduncle. You call it as cerebral peduncle. So tectum and cerebral peduncle. So the cerebral peduncle is further divided into three parts which are the from this region up to this portion you call it as tegmentum. Now the pigmented region here you call it as substantia nigra and the ventral most aspect you call it as crus cerebri. So these are the parts of midbrain. Dorsally you have a very small portion known as tectum and the part which is lying ventrally you call it as cerebral pedangle which is further divided into tegmentum substantia nigra and crust cerebri. Now when we take the section of uh, midbrain at the level of inferior colliculus and superior colliculus we can see that the crust cerebri as well as substantia nigra is one and the same throughout the midbrain. The difference happens for the tectum as well as the tegmental portion. So uh, first we will see what are the components of substantia nigra and crust cerebri in general because it is one and the same if, even if you take a section at the level of inferior colliculus or even if you take a section at the level of superior colliculus. So first we will see what is substantia nigra. Substantia nigra is actually a large motor nucleus which extends throughout the midbrain. It is just a large motor nucleus which extends throughout the midbrain. If you take a cross section you can see that it is actually wider medially and it tapers laterally and dorsally you can see that it is almost concave and smooth whereas ventrally it is not smooth and concave but it is spiked. You can see the spikes actually protruding into the crust cerebri. So dorsally it is concave and smooth and ventrally it is spiked. And the substantia nigra when you take a section of midbrain it is actually seen as a very pigmented region compared to the rest of the midbrain. Why is it pigmented? It is pigmented because of the presence of two main things. One is melanin and the other one is iron. So the nerve cells of substantia nigra contains melanin and iron. And melanin is actually considered to be a polymer of dopamine. So it is at this place you get the dopamine synthesized. And this dopamine is actually uh, carried to the basal ganglia. When you talk about the specific part of basal ganglia, it is to the corpus striatum. So what do you call the tract carrying dopamine from the substantia nigra to corpus striatum? You can call it as nigro striate pathway. Nigro means from the substantia nigra, striate means to the corpus striatum. So it is a nigro striatal pathway which is nothing but the axons of the nerve cells of the substantia nigra. And they carry the dopamine which is synthesized at this region, at the substantia nigra, 
to the basal ganglia. So what happens if there is a lesion in the substantia nigra? There will be dopamine deficiency and that is how we get Parkinsonism. So one of the reasons for Parkinsonism is depletion of the substantia nigra which will result in deficiency of dopamine. Now uh, we will see about the crust cerebri. So the crust cerebri mainly contains the fibers coming from the cerebral cortex downwards. So this region is actually the crust cerebri, the part of the cerebral peduncle. So crust cerebri contains the fibers coming from the cortex going down in order to reach the motor nuclei of the cranial nerves, in order to reach the spinal cord and in order to reach the pontine nuclei. So out of which the corticonuclear and corticospinal, corticonuclear and corticospinal fibers will be running through the middle two-third portion of the crust cerebri. Middle two-third portion of the crust cerebri, it contains the corticonuclear fibers going to the motor nuclei of the cranial nerves and the corticospinal fibers. Actually, the corticospinal and corticonuclear are actually forming the pyramidal tracts in the medulla. We have already discussed those portions. Now, what are the fibers running through the medial and lateral portion? Through the medial part, you have the frontopontine fibers. Frontopontine means the fibers coming from the frontal lobe of the cortex. Now, what are the fibers coming through the lateral part? Here you can remember it as POT, P-O-T. P stands for the fibers coming from the parietal lobe, O stands for the fibers coming from the occipital lobe and T stands for the fibers coming from the temporal lobe. Parietal, parietopontine, occipitopontine and temporopontine. So all these fibers will be passing through the lateral aspect of the crust cerebri. So this aspect, the substantia nigra and crust cerebri will be one and the same even if you take a section at the level of superior colliculus or inferior colliculus. Now we will see the differences. Uh, what are the other differences which you can make out at the level of inferior colliculus and superior colliculus? So before moving on to the, those sections, I would like to, uh, I would like all of you to remember one more thing. Which are the cranial nerve which you will get at the level of inferior colliculus and which are the cranial nerve which you, <coughs> which you will be getting at the level of superior colliculus. Inferior colliculus, you have the fourth cranial nerve and the superior colliculus, you have the third cranial nerve. Is there any other cranial nerve nuclei seated in the midbrain? I have already mentioned there is one cranial nerve nuclei which you, you will be getting throughout the brainstem. Anyway, if you take a section, you will be getting that cranial nerve nuclei. But different parts of that cranial nerve nuclei. That is the trigeminal. So trigeminal nucleus is actually like this. You have the mesencephalic portion of trigeminal. You have the chief sensory portion of trigeminal and you have the spinal nucleus of trigeminal and just next to chief sensory you have the motor. So the mesencephalic portion you will be getting in the midbrain, the chief sensory along with motor you will be getting in the pons and the spinal you will be getting in the medulla. So wherever you take a cross section of brainstem you will be getting a portion of trigeminal nerve nuclei. So, Let's move on to the level at inferior colliculus. So first we will be discussing about the grey matter, then we will be moving on to the white matter. So grey matter, what all things which you can make out? There is a central grey matter here and you have the cavity within the grey matter. It is the cerebral aqueduct or aqueduct of Sylvius. And here you get two cranial nerve nuclei. This one is a trochlea, the trochlea nuclei, cranial, nuclei, cranial nerve nuclei of Trochleana and here you have the mesencephalic nucleus of trigeminal nerve. One thing which you have to remember here is it is only the trochlea cranial nerve which emerges from the dorsal aspect. So till now we have shown all the cranial nerve coming like this emerging from the ventral aspect but here we have to show the trochlea cranial nerve emerging from the dorsal aspect. So it winds around the lateral aspect of the central grey matter and decusates at the superior medullary velum and comes out through the dorsal aspect. And what happens? It will be running along the lateral surface of the midbrain and this is how it emerges from the lateral aspect of the cerebral pedicle. So this is the cerebral pedicle 
and this portion is known as a crust cerebri. So when you look at the ventral aspect, you can see a portion again coming from the ventral aspect, but the nerve has already emerged from the dorsal aspect, it has decussated and runs along the lateral aspect and now it's seen lying on the ventral aspect. Now the other one is the mesencephalic nucleus of trigeminal. What has the mesencephalic nucleus of trigeminal to do? It is concerned with the proprioception. We know that the trigeminal is mainly supplying the face. So it receives its proprio proprioceptive fibers from the muscles of mastication, from the ocular and the facial muscles. So these are the muscles, uh, the proprioceptive fibers arising from these muscles are carried to the mesencephalic nucleus of trigeminal nerve. Now which are the other cranial nerve nuclei you will be getting at this region. Um, so there are no other cranial nerve nuclei, you should bear in mind that the third cranial nerve nuclei is seen at the level of superior colliculus. Uh, now we have, we have to mention about the inferior colliculus. So inferior colliculus is actually a large mass of grey matter which is seated dorsally in the tectal portion. And inferior colliculus we have already mentioned it is connected through the inferior brachium to the medial geniculate body. So you can see a lemniscus lying closer to the inferior colliculus. So what could be this lemniscus? This lemniscus is known as lateral lemniscus. So lateral lemniscus we have already discussed when we discussed about pons. They are the continuation of the trapezoid body. So trapezoid body what are they? They are the fibers coming from the cochlear nuclei. So cochlear nuclei is concerned with audition. So auditory fibers from the cochlear nuclei will be decussating in the trapezoid body in the pons and they will be ascending as the lateral lemniscus and they will be ending at the level of inferior colliculus. So that is the importance of inferior colliculus and they will be carried to the medial geniculate body through the inferior brachium. Now what are the other bundle of white matter which you will be getting at this level? Here you can see the reticular formation. So the reticular formation is again another bundle which you will be getting throughout the brain stem. And in the midline on either side you have the medial longitudinal fasciculus, tectospinal and rubrospinal. Medial longitudinal fasciculus, tectospinal and rubrospinal. There is one more decussating bundle of fibers. What are they? They are the fibers coming from the superior cerebellar pedangle. So superior cerebellar pedangle decussates at this region of tegmentum. And what are the rest of the lemnisci which you will be getting here? They are the medial lemniscus, trigeminal lemniscus, spinal lemniscus and lateral lemniscus we have already mentioned. So in order you have the my tongue speaks loud. That is a mnemonic which you can remember easily. M stands for medial lemniscus, T stands for trigeminal, S stands for spinal and L stands for lateral lemniscus. And the lateral lemniscus is actually ending at the level of inferior colliculus. Now uh, let's see the section at the level of superior colliculus. So what are the structures which differ from the section at the level of inferior colliculus? So let's see it under the two main headings that we have already discussed. It is the section, uh, the structures which you get as the grey matter and the structures which you get as the white matter. So grey matter, first we have to look for the cranial nerve nuclei. At the superior level of superior colliculus, you have the cranial nerve nuclei, the third cranial nerve nuclei. So this is the grey matter region in the middle and you have the cerebral aqueduct, the cavity and you have the third cranial nerve nuclei. So which is the third cranial nerve? That is the oculomotor nerve. So the two oculomotor nuclei will be actually a line very closer so that it will be taking up the shape of the triangle. So it is almost triangular in shape since they are actually lying very closer. And in the oculomotor nerve complex you have the Edinger Westphal nucleus also seated dorsally. It is actually a part of the oculomotor nuclear nerve complex, Edinger Westphal nucleus. Now just lateral to it you have the medial longitudinal fasciculus. So medial longitudinal fasciculus which was actually lying along on either side of the midline is actually lying now closer to the oculomotor nuclear complex. Now which is the other cranial nerve nuclei? Here you have the mesencephalic nucleus of trigeminal. So these are the two cranial nerve nuclei which you will be getting here. 
Now what happens with the oculomotor nerve? Oculomotor nerve emerges from the oculomotor nuclei and it passes through the red nucleus and substantia nigra and it comes out from the ventral aspect of the midbrain. So this is what we see. This is the oculomotor nerve which is emerging from the ventral aspect of midbrain. Now any other grey matter which you can make out here? We have already taken the section at the level of superior colliculus. So you have the grey matter, the superior, the nucleus of the superior colliculus. So what is it concerned with? So the fibers or the efferents to the superior colliculus comes from four main regions. You can remember the mnemonics as RISC, R-I-S instead of K you can consider it as C. So that is the code which you can easily remember about the efferent fibers reaching the superior colliculus. So superior colliculus is mainly concerned with vision. We know that it is going to the lateral geniculate body. L stands for light. So the fibers, the efferent fibers come from retina. So opposite side of retina. So R stands for the fibers coming from retina. I stands for inferior colliculus. S stands for the spinal cord and C stands for the cortex, visual cortex, the frontal and occipital cortex because those fibers are concerned with the conjugate eye movements. So these are the regions from which the superior colliculus will be receiving the efferent fibers and the nucleus of superior colliculus will be giving off efferent fibers. So where are they going? Efferent fibers go to the spinal cord as well as the bulbar that is the medulla medullary portion and what are they concerned with the superior these the connection between the uh, retina inferior colliculus spinal cord and cortex and the different fibers going to the spinal cord and the bulbar portion what has it all uh, altogether when we consider what has it to do it is actually concerned with the eye movements and the head and neck movements when the fibers from this region the tectum goes to the spinal cord this will be actually uh, helping us to turn the head with respect to the vision, the stimulus of vision. Now, which are the other grey matter components which you can make out here? You can see a very small nucleus. This region is actually considered as the tectum. The portion which is lying anterior to the tectum, you call it as pretectal nucleus. So, the small nucleus which is lying just in front of the superior colliculus is known as pretectal nucleus. So, pretectal nucleus is actually receiving fibers from the optic tract and it gives off fibers to the edinger vesicular nucleus of the same side as well as the opposite side. And this is actually forming a main or just actually having a major role in the pupillary reflex pathway. So, I will be uh, taking a session of, on the pupillary reflex pathway in some other sessions. Uh, so, just remember you have a very small nucleus known as pretectal nucleus which is lying anterior to the superior colliculus and it is connected to the edinger westphal nucleus of the same side as well as with the opposite side and it is concerned with the pupillary light reflex. Any other grey matter which you can make out here? Yes, you have a large red coloured region on the ventral aspect or in the tegmental region and that uh, red coloured region is known as red nucleus. Why is it called red nucleus? Because in fresh specimen, if you take a section of midbrain in a fresh specimen, this region will be actually seen red in color because of the high vascularity and also due to the presence of a pigment, iron pigments. So iron pigment as well as the increased vascularity of this region will impart a red color to this region. So what about the red nucleus? So red nucleus has got fibers going to the red nucleus and the fibers emerging from the red nucleus. So where are the fibers coming uh, to the red nucleus? I mean the efferent fibers. So efferent fibers are coming from the cortex, the cerebral cortex. You have the cerebellum here so you have the fibers coming from the cerebellum and you also have the fibers coming from the globus pallidus. And what about the uh, efferent fibers or the fibers which are coming out of the red nucleus, they almost go to most of the regions of the brain. They will go to the spinal cord, they will go to the 
bulbar region they will go to the reticular region like that they will go to numerous places so it is not easy to remember all the efferent connections just remember you have the efferent fibers from the cortex you have the fibers coming from the cerebellum you have the fibers coming from the globus pallidus and the efferent fibers from the red nucleus will be mainly going to the spinal cord you have the fibers going to the medulla and you have fibers going to the reticular formation so what is the main purpose of red nucleus it is actually uh, regarded as an integrating center or a relay center for to the two major set of fibers so which are the two major set of fibers you have the fibers coming from the cortex to the spinal cord you have the fibers coming from the cerebellum to the spinal cord so you have the fibers coming from the cortex to the spinal cord you have the fibers coming from the cerebellum to the spinal cord so in between you have the red nucleus you have the red nucleus so the fibers going through the red nucleus you call it as cortico rubro spinal and the cerebellum the red the fibers coming from the cerebellum pass through the red nucleus and it reaches the spinal cord so you call it as cerebello rubro spinal fibers so the red nucleus is actually acting as an integrating or relay center for these two sets of fibers now uh, we that's all about the gray matter of the uh, midbrain at the level of superior colliculus what about the white matter white matter first we will see about the lemniscus the lemnisci are arranged in order from medial to lateral medial lemniscus trigeminal trigeminal lemniscus spinal lemniscus but i am not going to mark the lateral lemniscus why lateral lemniscus has already entered into the inferior colliculus which we have already discussed so at the level of superior colliculus lateral lemniscus is missing or you won't be getting the lateral lemniscus at the level of superior colliculus that point you have to keep in mind what about the other set of fibers you have the reticular formation yes throughout the brain stem you will be getting reticular formation on either side what about the other set here you can see two decussations in the tegmental portion here we have only shown one decussation in the midline in the tegmental portion that is the fibers coming from the superior cerebellar peduncle here you are showing two decussations one dorsally and one ventrally so dorsally the decussation you call it as the dorsal decussation of maynard and ventrally you call the decussation as the ventral decussation of forel so dorsal maynard and ventral forel so how are these fibers formed so dorsal decussation fibers are actually coming from the superior colliculus and they are running to the spinal cord and medulla so what do you call the fibers coming from the superior colliculus going to medulla and going to the spinal cord superior colliculus is actually a region of tectum so you can call it as tectospinal and tectobulbar so tectospinal and tectobulbar fibers will be actually decussating at the dorsal aspect of tegmentum and you call it as the dorsal decussation of maynard and what about this ventral decussation you can see a ventral decussation so the fibers coming from the red nucleus and going to the spinal cord so what do you call the fibers coming from the red nucleus and going to the spinal cord you call it as rubro spinal so rubro spinal fibers will be actually decussating in the ventral aspect of tegmentum so these are the two decussations which you will be getting in the tegmental portion at the level of superior colliculus so, so once again i will just brief about the midbrain you have the ventral aspect which is mainly made up of cerebral peduncles and in between it is actually the interpeduncular fossa dorsally you have the corpora quadrigemina and they are the superior and inferior colliculi connected to the lateral geniculate body and medial geniculate body through superior and inferior brachium then if you draw an imaginary line at the level of aqueduct of sylvius you divide it into a tectum a dorsal portion and the tegmentum the tectum is a very small region which consists of the superior and inferior colliculi and the rest of the portion belongs to the cerebral peduncle cerebral peduncle is further divided into tegmentum substantia nigra and crus cerebri where the crus cerebri and the substantia nigra is almost the same throughout the midbrain 
and the difference lies in the tectum and tegmentum. So we can discuss it under the two main headings, the level at the level of inferior colliculus and the one at the level of superior colliculus. And you have the three cranial nerve nuclei seated in the midbrain. They are the third and fourth and along with the mesencephalic part of trigeminal. Then you have the main decussations at the level of inferior colliculus. You have the cerebellar pedicles, superior cerebellar pedicles decussating. And in, at the level of superior colliculus, you have the dorsal and ventral tegmental decussations. That's all about midbrain in a nutshell. Hope you understood this session. And I would like all of you to subscribe to my channel and please uh, click the bell button so that you will get uh, notifications uh, when I do the future videos. Thank you.